I would like to begin by acknowledging that my feet are on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And I pay my deep respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all First Nations people, wherever they are. Kintsugi, from the broken to beautiful. Well, it seems that I adopted that without even knowing 18 years ago when I came across the broken food system. And for the last 18 years, I've been attempting to repair, replenish and nourish our country. When I started Oz Harvest, I had no idea how much food was going to waste. I had no idea that the system was broken. What I thought was I would just fix a little problem that I had. And actually, therein lies a little clue for anyone who's looking for purpose, meaning, that, that big idea. Sometimes when we solve a problem that we say, why does nobody do that? And we take it on ourselves. We come, we, we find our Dharma, which is exactly what has happened to me, finding purpose. I did not realize that not only was I starting a social organization, I was starting an environmental organization. I did not know that food waste feeds climate change. Now, what do I mean by that? What do you mean food waste feeds climate change? Many of us, when we think of climate change and feel so helpless, well, we think about solar on our roofs, we think about electric vehicles, and not all of us can afford both those things. Well, I'm here to tell you that we, each and every one of us, have a huge impact to make on this broken food system. And that is literally by the food that we don't eat, not the food that we do eat, that actually in Australia today, 7.6 million tons of food is going to waste every year. It is costing our economy $36.6 billion. Globally, it's $1.3 trillion. And the impact of that food waste to the environment is that 10% of all global greenhouse gas emissions come from food waste. So just to give you an idea, the aviation industry is just 2%. So I know we, we don't realize that we have in the palm of our hands this ability to shift and change our country's efforts to halve food waste. We in this country have committed to halving food waste in line with the UN SDG goal 12.3. In 2015, I went to Parliament House with rescued food and prepared an exquisite meal for our politicians and got them to commit to halving food waste. Well, it's taken a while, but I can share with you that just this week, there was a wonderful food waste summit but the point is that within our whole supply chain from farm to fork, we are wasting a third of all food that is produced. So of course, this is not only unconscionable, but it has the side effect, that social part that I see every single day. So the environmental, I now understand why it is so important for all of us to be involved in not wasting food. But this, the other side, the food insecurity side, here in Australia, as globally, we've had fires, we've had floods, we've had drought, we've had COVID, and now we have this extraordinary cost of living crisis that we, in my role, am seeing a whole new cohort of people who never ever thought of themselves as food insecure. 
couple of weeks ago, we have a free supermarket here in Sydney. And a couple of weeks ago, a very well-dressed, about 60-year-old man came into our supermarket, very embarrassed. And when we, as we do, we greet everybody with dignity and respect, and we ask their name and how can we support them, he turned around and said, never have I not had a job. Never have I not been able to cover my core basic costs. But right now, my job is not covering the rent, my health, fuel, energy, and the first thing that people cut on is their food. So we think about Kintsugi. We think about from the broken to the beautiful, this extraordinary philosophy of finding the scar. I want to share with you that in the Jewish religion, there is a concept called tikkun olam. What that means is actually repairing the world. This, the philosophy behind tikkun olam is that our world is broken. And I think there's nobody who says it better than one of my musical heroes, Leonard Cohen, who turns around in his song anthem and says, ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. That's how the light gets in. It's in that broken crack. And that is so fundamentally the concept that, that all of us today have been talking about with this extraordinary theme. Our role, each and every one of our role in how we can make a difference. To the man who the other day crossed the street when he saw me and said to me, I just want to thank you because since we've been getting food from Oz Harvest, my life has fundamentally changed. From the kid, from the mother who stopped me and said, I just want to say thank you. And I'm saying, why are you saying thank you to me? And she says, because from the time we've got food, my kid who was disruptive in school, couldn't concentrate, has now just gone to university. The point is, not everyone has to start a charity. I have no idea why I was so blessed to do that, but every single one of us can make a difference. Every single one of us can repair our broken world. We can use it up, which is the theory and the, the results of huge research we've done that households can shift and change the 40% of waste that we cause just by using up our leftovers. So that's one way of fixing our broken food system. But every single one of us has an attitude of gratitude, understanding how each and every one of us can really make a difference. And so I do believe we can all make a difference. So I want to share a little quote with you it's from one of my favorite authors, and it goes like this. In the event of a huge conflagration, like a fire, each and every one of us has the capacity to make a choice. We have three options in the event of a huge fire. Number one, we can look at that fire and we can run away as fast as we can and leave those that cannot run to burn. It is an option. Number two, we can write an angry letter to the newspaper demanding that the person responsible gets punished. Or number three, we can run and find a teaspoon because all of us have a teaspoon. And I know this teaspoon is tiny and that fire was huge. But each and every one of us, if we use our teaspoon, we can put out that fire. So I would like each and every one of you to do this with your hands. 
Can you see what I'm doing? Please do this with your hands. I can't actually see if you're doing it. I just have to believe that you are. Now look into your hands because in your hand is your metaphorical teaspoon. Can you take that teaspoon? Can you put it to your heart? I'm looking to see you all putting it to your heart. There's one fellow who's not. You put your hands right there because right now you've embedded your teaspoon and I want each and every one of you to use your teaspoon every day for random acts of kindness to fix the broken world, to fix the cracks, to embellish them with gold so that we have a better world. Sometimes at the end of the day, I wonder what my mother would think about my life if she was alive now. I wonder if I'm living out some of the dreams she never allowed herself to dream. The truth is, I'm living a life I really never imagined possible. I never imagined living a life beyond surviving, beyond making money and my own pleasure. I never imagined anything beyond happy. But the day came when I asked myself the question, is this life of mine good for me? And is it doing good for others? All I can really say for sure is the day I really started questioning what was meaningful for me, everything changed. Never in my life was I considered the capable one. Never was I considered funny or popular. I was never academic. I was not particularly smart. Never was I considered beautiful. I wasn't the one with a personality or talent. So if a person like me, a person missing so many ingredients in the recipe for making a difference, can do something, then anyone can. This is me, Ronnie Khan, standing before you in my naked truth. This is the story of a repurposed life.